Good morning. Good morning. It's Hollywood Studios today. It's our final visit to Hollywood Studios for this trip. The good thing is we've pretty much done every ride in the park at this point. Yeah. So it's going to be another fairly chilled day. We'll get on what we can get on. Um, I think for me I want to see a couple of the shows that we've not seen yet. So the Beauty and the Beast show, yeah, Indiana I want, Jones. I want to see Indiana Jones. Yeah, so we'll see some shows. I am hoping to track down Chippendale and the Rescue Rangers outfits. Now, if you watch the vlogs before, if you are friends with me on Instagram, you'll know that I am the most awkward person in the world when meeting characters. I'm prepared to put that aside for Chippendale and the Rescue Rangers outfits. So if I see them, I will be flinging aside many a small child to get to them. I'll be very excited. I think I would also queue up to meet Max from a Goofy movie today. Okay. I just watched the, a Goofy movie for the first time the week before we came out here. And now I can't rest until I've met Max either. So we'll see how that goes today. I just want to say one thing. I forgot to say it on the white metaphor vlog. As I'm wearing this t-shirt today. I'm going to confirm one thing. Greedo shot first. I don't know what that means. say the crowds are a little bit more manageable today in Galaxy's Edge. For example, there's at least three feet of space around me. That's that's real progress. And I just met Max. I'm very excited about that. I need flight crews to transport this valuable merchandise across the galaxy. Pilots to navigate, engineers to operate the ship, and gunners to defend the shipments. And that is where you come in. Oh, oh the Millennium Falcon. On oh, no, for some very fast and very profitable expeditions. Chewbacca, my fine furry friend. Yes, yes. As Mary, you let us use the ship. We'll get you the supplies you need. It's a win-win. You help the resistance and I get all the profits. So, three guesses where we are for lunch. 
if you watched our vlogs from last year or if you are friends with me on Instagram, you'll know I love Pizza Rizzo. I think it's the best place in the whole Walt Disney World. I think that may be taking it a bit far, but I do love Pizza Rizzo. So I thought today I would tell you the top five reasons why I love Pizza Rizzo so much. a Muppets themed restaurant. What more do you want in life than a Muppets themed restaurant? Even on a really busy day you can pretty much be guaranteed that you'll get a seat and on a day like today where it's not so busy we are up here on the patio and I think unless there's anyone over my shoulder and Ross can confirm we are entirely on our own up here in the patio. We have the whole place to ourselves and inside it has two levels and a third room that are all absolutely enormous so plenty of space for everybody because it's shaded it's huge it has loads of fans air conditioning and it has tremendous views over my pit's courtyards some great people watching can be done from up here and just a really relaxed chilled vibe Some people might remember a few years ago, some very big voices in the Disney social media community had a lot of horrible things to say about Pizza Rizzo. They had a lot of horrible things to say about it. They said it was the worst pizza in the whole Disney world, encouraged everyone to stay as far away as possible. And that made it a little bit of an underdog in my mind, and it wasn't a fair criticism, I don't think. Um, so it's made me love it a little bit more, knowing that there's some people who absolutely can't stand it. is an old style theme park pizza. I think a lot of the newer flatbreads that are on a lot of the menus around Walt Disney World at the moment, they are really really heavy on the cheese whereas this old style puffy pizza has a much better balance between the tomato sauce and the pizza for me. It's just perfect for me. Sometimes all you want in life is a little puffy pizza. Um, or in this case, of course, and I have actually shared a little puffy pizza today. Just a little bit of a, a snack because we have a big meal later this evening. So those are the top reasons that I love Pizza Rizzo. And before it was Pizza Rizzo, it was Pizza Planet. Home of my very favourite green aliens. Let's not to know. So we seem to have a really light day here in the Hollywood Studios. I don't know why I frowned when I said that. That's a good thing. But it is unusually quiet. I was just having a look at Genie Plus and the tip board and all the return times at the moment. So right now for reference it is just about to turn 2pm and all of our return times are within the kind of half an hour to an hour slot. Even Slinky Dog Dash we had to purposefully rebook that and rebook that because we want to ride it at night. But up until fairly recently, it was still giving you, you know, early afternoon return times. In terms of the actual wait time today, Tower of Terror must be a walk on, it says 13 minutes. Yeah, so, and I think I think that is that's kind of the recognised thing, if it says 13 minutes for Tower of Terror, it means it's a, it's a walk on. Um, Toy Story Mania is at 60 minutes. Rise of the Resistance is at 55 minutes. Mm. I am not kidding, Rise of the Resistance is at 55 minutes. If we did not have a lightning lane for it in half an hour, I would have been taking them up on that. Star Tours hasn't been above 10 minutes all day. Smuggler's Run is at 35, Runaway Railway is at 40, so there's not anything that's got an absolutely huge line just now. So we're using a bit of strategy with our Genie Plus today. As I said, I've pushed Slinky Dog Dash purposefully into the evening hours so that we can ride it as the lights are coming on and Toy Story Land. Things like starters, we haven't used our, our lightning lane for that yet. We're keeping that, we've already been on it today just through the standby line. We're going to go on it again just shortly in the standby line and I'm holding back my lightning lane just to see if the queue picks up later if it starts to get a little bit busy in the evening we'll use it then and same with Tower of Terror I'm looking to do that this evening as the lights are coming on in the park so I'm purposefully holding that back just now 
Um, and it might mean if it's quiet on Tower of Terror, we might actually get multiple rides in. And that would really make it the perfect Hollywood Studios day because that was my biggest complaint from last year with Genie Plus was that it had changed a park like this for us because previously we would always be able to get maybe three or four rides on Tower of Terror in a day and we only managed it once in the whole of the two weeks that we were here the last time. So if we managed to go on it more than once today, I'm going to be very impressed with this Hollywood Studios day. I'm liking the light cloud, uh, light clouds, light clouds. Been able to walk in a bit of distance here today. There's nobody here. Even when we down the courtyard, there's nobody there. So, it feels like you have to make a park to yourself a park. Sometimes if there's a movie promotion going on, they might be running trailers for the movie instead of the one man stream show. I love it. I love hearing Walt tell the story of how he started Walt Disney Productions, all the way through to having the idea for Walt Disney World in Florida. I think it's incredibly inspiring and something that should probably be required viewing for everyone who comes to the parks. Um, but yeah, I wish it was on all the time. I wish more people knew about it and came in to enjoy it. But if you get the chance, stop by and see the show. It's an incredible story. It's only a 15 minute show. It's 15 minutes out of your day to learn how we got everything that's around us just now. The last remnant of the Backlot Tour. It doesn't start We have finally made it to Baseline Cat House, where I have a giant margarita. Well, the reason I have wanted to come here is, once upon a time, this was the writer's stop, and it was a really cute little coffee shop with a bakery type thing that was all dedicated to the theme of writing. And still inside was the last remnant of the writer's stop, just above the bar inside where you can see writer's stop spelled out over the signs. I'll pop into the footage of that there. I am going to dive into this margarita. What do you have? I have the Golden State Golden Road Cerveza. I probably got that backwards, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Is it nice? I would recommend you have a drink. I know you don't like beer that much. But still, I think it's that much I've got. I will try it. It's nice. I'm not much of a beer drinker, but that's nice. I'm now going to try my margarita. Happiness in a cup. While we're sitting here enjoying our drinks, we're also trying to strategise for dinner. 
we did have reservations for Mama Melrose this evening, but it was quite an early reservation. It was a 5.30 reservation. We did have lunch a little bit later than we normally do. Neither of us were hungry enough in Mama Melrose, if you haven't been before. It is amazing, massive portions of Italian food, and we thought it would be quite heavy and would be ultimately wasted on us tonight. So we cancelled that reservation, but that has left us with absolutely no idea where we want to eat. So I've done what the only sensible thing was left to do, which was come here and have a margarita while we decide what we want to eat. Liquid dinner. Ross <laughs> just said liquid dinner. I don't think that's a good idea. But yeah, we'll figure out what we're going to have to eat shortly. I can report live from Hollywood Studios that Baseline Tap House do not skim on the alcohol that they put in their drink. They're not stingy with it. Keep that in mind if you go, because it was a pre-made drink. I thought that would be like your typical August Cantina mixed drink. It was not. It was not. Keep that in mind. They do not skimp on the tequila and their margarita. So we're going to go and have something to eat now at ABC Commissary and see if I can regain the feeling in my legs. So we landed on ABC Commissary and I'm so excited because we have said that we will eat in ABC Commissary every year we have come here since 2008 and we finally made it in here so this is quite the trip for checking off things that we keep saying we're going to do. So I have ordered the buffalo chicken grilled sandwich with steak fries and also the club sandwich chicken club with steak fries and we've got a couple of desserts as well this evening so I will insert some footage of the food itself and let you know how that is and then I'll also take you around this restaurant because I have never been in here before but it is absolutely gorgeous inside so I will take you around and show you some of the detail inside in just a second okay unusually we got desserts today Ross is having the mint chocolate chip cheesecake which is chocolate cheesecake topped with dark chocolate ganache and whipped mint chocolate chip cream that's good the strange as it sounds they have the mint chocolate on top it works the filling is nice and not too heavy and the ganache is just perfect. This ends my fit vlog for the day. <laughs> I am having the tropical tart, which I have to read from the menu because it has so many ingredients. So it has mango passion fruit curd filled graham cracker tart topped with whipped raspberry vanilla bean panna cotta toasted coconut and dehydrated strawberry and passion fruit. It's a mouthful. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Let's find out. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I thought that was going to be an instant no based on just the, the sound of those ingredients, but it's actually quite nice. It is quite light. There's lots of different flavours going on there, but I actually really like it. Ross has shown me his as if I want to taste it, but I don't think I do want to taste a mint chocolate chip cheesecake. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try his chocolate chip cheesecake. Back to my nice fruity one. That's that's a hard no. I think that continues to be a no for several minutes after you've had it, as long as he's happy.
just come off Tower of Terror, which after a super strong margarita and a buffalo chicken grill sandwich, I feel awesome right now. Um, but yeah, I love that ride. So we are approaching around about half past seven, probably, somewhere between seven and seven thirty. And our plan at the moment is we're going to try and do one last route around the park. And because this is our final day in Hollywood Studios and each of the next days we have one more full day in each of the park, we wanted to just take a little bit of time in each one of this week's videos for some imagineering moments. And what we mean by that is just showing you some of our very, very favourite small details around the park, the things that are so noisy here, the things that make coming to Walt Disney World so special for us, some of the reasons that we keep coming back, you know, like part of that storytelling around Disney World. So the very first one I want to highlight is the ride that we've just come off. And I'll insert some footage here, but Tower of Terror is one of the most immersive queues and overall experiences that you'll get here at Disney World. I think the Hollywood Tower Hotel, to me, feels like a living, breathing place, like it's a real hotel. The detail and the queue, the overall theming around it, and just every little thing that you look at brings another detail of the storytelling to life. Things like in the main lobby when you go in and how much of like the cobwebbing that you can see in the real feel of an abandoned hotel. I also like things in the exterior of the queue like the cracks in the walls, um, just the, the way the landscape is done to really give you a proper feel of a, an abandoned hotel. It just brings it to life so well so that's why this is one of my favourite ones. I'll show you some more as we walk around and try and get one last look in before we head to see Fantasmic tonight. And the next one of our imagineering moments is this little touch here, this little nod to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You can see there, hopefully the camera's picking up, the outline of Roger Rabbit in the window and the decor for Eddie Valiant's private investigator's office right there above Hollywood and Vine. And then if I turn around, you can see the Maroon Studios sign above Kiwis. This 80s and 90s kid appreciates a Who Framed Roger Rabbit reference now and again. So I like, I like those little touches if you know to look for. I'll also include here some footage that Ross got earlier of the Rocketeers helmet. Yes, because I believe that Peavy's is actually from the Rocketeer. Is that not the name of his elderly friend? It has been many, boss. many a year since <laughs> I have seen the Rocketeer. You can confirm or deny that in the comments if you know the answer to that. I have not, however, tracked down Chippendale in their Rescue Rangers outfits, which will just become another thing to add to the list, like the Orange Bird backpack. In the same Echo Lake area, I also love the, the Gertie's footprints in the ground as she's walking into Echo Lake, sitting there. We interrupt this imaginary moment tour of Hollywood Studios to bring you a ride on Sartors because it's a five minute wait so we're not going to pass that up, we're going to go on Sartors. As if by magic, Sartors brings me to a little bit of a cheat imaginary moment because technically this does apply to most if not all of the parks but another imaginary detail that I like or a design detail are the pre-shows. The Sartors being one of my favourites because you have the incredible Alice and Janie's voice welcoming you onto your Star Tours cruise and I think depending on who they cast in these pre-shows it can absolutely make a ride experience. Um, I don't think it should be a shock to anyone who my absolute all-time favourite is. It is of course Doctor Seeker over at Dinosaur. But it is, it's like Doctor Seeker, Alice and Janie on Star Tours. I know you don't think as much, but even Doctor Stevens on Avatar. Yeah, I mean, Doctor Stevens on Avatar, it has become a bit of a meme in its own right. It has. With the, and a uh, fly. So they're, they're part of the experience and it's something they could just have you wait in line and snake backwards and forwards in a queue, but... They, they do go all out to get some amazing talent 
to come in and do these pea shows. And not all pea shows are made equal. Looking at you, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> and completely unplanned, Ross has just brought another imagineering moment. The thermal detonator, Coca-Cola. I won't spend a lot of time on this, you know how I feel about this, but look at that. Look at that. And it tastes better when it's out of a thermal detonator bottle. That's just science. It's just science. Okay, now it would be a cheat just to say Galaxy's Edge. I'm not going to say Galaxy's Edge all together, but I think I can get away with saying Galaxy's Edge at night because the way that this place lights up the way the colours change and the way the atmosphere changes once everybody's lightsabers start lighting up and the way the, the spires are lit. It is so incredibly detailed and incredibly beautiful and I do not have the skill either as a photographer or a videographer to in any way do it justice. It's something that you truly have to walk through and experience to really get the feel for. Okay. Yeah, then I mean, we'll watch this video back and we'll still not have that true sense of being here because it is just so lovely walking through it and so immersive. But the way the lights all work together here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I won't say all of Galaxy's Edge, even though all of Galaxy's Edge, but Galaxy's Edge at night is something very, very special. So what did you say before we left? I said I wasn't going to buy anything silly. And uh, what did you do? Day. <laughs> so, we are back at the room. Did you enjoy your date haul of studios today? I did. I did. I enjoyed the tab house. I enjoyed Fantasmic. I enjoyed the crouch being quiet. Um, yeah, it was a super fun day. I think we got to do most things. Didn't see all the shows and didn't do all the rides, but we, we got to do loads and loads of stuff. We got to do Star Tours quite a few times as well. So lots of fun was had. Um, I was very glad to finally get to go into Baseline Tap House. I was very glad to finally eat in the ABC Commissary and check off a few things that I've been waiting to do for a really long time. Do you know, today I think we need to talk a little bit about Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes. Yes. 
So over the course of this trip, we've had a lot more success with Genie Plus than we had last year. We've definitely kind of got it down now, I think, and figured out how to make the most of it. I do think, though, Disney's created a problem for themselves because I have noticed, particularly with things like Rise of the Resistance, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway as well, these newer rides, they break a lot. And like Rise of the Resistance today, we were waiting for quite a while out in the sun after they've charged $20 per person for a lightning lane which is a lot of money to pay to not have a very quick wait to get through. Now, I will be fair, obviously the, the main queue was like 65 minutes at this point. We waited, I think, all in from the point we entered the queue to the point we actually got on the ride vehicle was about 30 minutes. But a good portion of that was out in the sun. and It was beaten down on you. Yeah, it's... It just feels like they've not quite got the hang of this yet. And it's the same with Genie Plus itself, outside of the individual lightning lanes. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway has broken down <coughs> every single time we've had a, a lightning lane for it. Which is fine, it's, it's not a complaint about it breaking down, but it did make me wonder, a lot of people were leaving the queue because it wasn't moving. And we felt like we had to stay because once you've used that Genie Plus Lightning Lane for that day, that's that's it used, so it's not like the old days of Fast Pass where you can just pull another one and come back later. Um, if you come back later, you're going to have to wait in the, the full line for it. And I just think it's a problem they've created that wasn't there before. It's I don't know, it, it's been on my mind today because there's been a few things I thought, what? how does this work now? Like, So if we leave the line, how do they make that right? How do they know that we didn't get to ride? Um, or that the ride went down before we get before we get on it. So I don't know. It's something to keep in mind when you're deciding whether you want to use Genie Plus, whether you want to buy individual lightning lanes in particular. And I would say especially for things like Rise of the Resistance because it does break down a lot. Even in the couple of times we've been on it, it's been in B mode at least once. Yes. Um, where not all the elements have been working. So it's just something to bear in mind whether you want to pay that money to ride it or whether you want to try rope drop it something like that I wouldn't recommend skipping it it's, it's a fabulous ride but something to bear in mind I feel it doesn't always work for every park Animal Kingdom yes Epcot yes Hollow Shoes you get a few things that you can get in the head of other people but as a whole I don't think there's that many things in Hollow Shoes that you can use it for that is not shows and things that are worthwhile yeah, that's a, that's a really good point because we also used it for Indiana Jones, which we, we didn't really need to use it for. It was just because it was coming up and we were going to go to the show anyway. But if anything, you were worse off using it at Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular because we ended up again waiting in a line for a, a relatively long period of time outside in the sun whereas if we'd walked up to the show a few minutes before it started, we'd have walked straight in and sat down without having to wait so um, it's definitely not one I recommend fully for somewhere like Hollywood Studios and especially not on a day like today because I mean, it, it, it's just pure laziness that I was using that because I, I don't want to wait in an hour long line but some of the some of the lines were much more manageable today so I don't think we 100% needed it no. today. No, ahead of time you don't always know what the crowds are going to be yeah. like but at times you saw things like Mickey Minnie's at 25 minutes Yeah. Uh, other things 5 minutes all day and 10 minutes Yeah. and well then you get other things like oh, I did not to mention Terror Terror that by the time we got off it, it wasn't up to 75 minutes. Yeah. So I think today was quite a good opportunity to observe how it was actually working, especially once we've now got the hang of it and we know how to use it and how to make the most of it. We were able to properly judge it today and, and I can see where there's still some problems with it. And again, it's a problem with Disney's own making. This is what happens when they want to want to get you to pay for something that was free before. So that's what I have to say about Genie Plus. What were my other obs well, I have one more observation. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway breaks down a lot. A lot. You know what never broke down when I was on it? Great movie ride. I never saw the great movie ride break down. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. 
Okay, maybe right to Tim Breakdown. Other than that, I think that's a wrap from Hollywood Studios. It is, yeah. We obviously did get to see Phantasmic in the end as well. And we've had some controversy this evening. Yes. I have, I have yes. made a bold statement, which I don't know if I'll change my mind about. But I have said that for me personally, Phantasmic has crept into the top spot of evening shows. And that's even with Happily Ever After back. I believe this is a Margarita talking. I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is the Margarita talking. I, I genuinely think it's crept into the top spot for me. The music, Sorcerer Mickey up the top of the mountain, this is unmatched, unmatched. I hope you've enjoyed coming round Hollywood Studios with us again today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.